All right, this video should be a little bit shorter than the last one. Now we have our machinery for about how hypothesis tests look, what the process is, what conclusions we do, what that, what that logic is. So now we're just going to toss in a couple more. We have the mean and the standard deviation. So 10-3, we're doing hypothesis tests about a population mean. And so let's look at a particular example. Here I've got the steps again. Um, the test statistic is a T now. And um, this should hopefully look familiar from the confidence intervals where we had this T test statistic X bar minus mu over S over square root of N. Uh, same steps here, one through six. And so then now we just have a, a different test statistic, basically. So um, according to this, uh, the National Library of Medicine, the average resting heart rate for Americans is about 72 beats per minute. So our question is, is there enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to support a claim that this particular class has an average heart rate different from the national average? And we'll check those conditions, that uh, see if they're met, uh, and then we'll do the hypothesis test. So here's the key here. This particular class has an average heart rate different from the national average. So the parameter here is going to be the mean. We're looking at the average. Um, the null hypothesis is the status quo. We're assuming until proven otherwise that the mean of this class is also 72 beats per minute. Um, and the alternative here, you're going to be careful, um, this one said different from. So we're not sure if we're going to be greater or less. So we just put a not equal to. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, we have the 5% level of significance, significance, so alpha is 0.05. All right, before we do the test, let's check the conditions. So we need to do um, a box plot and a QQ plot. And actually, I just did those already, so I'll just show you here. So a box plot, um, to make the example work, I actually had to tweak one of the data values uh, from class. Uh, this was our class data here. Um, so no outliers. And the QQ plot, pretty linear. A little bit extreme down here at the end, but. Um, we have some flexibility at the end, pretty linear in the middle. So we could say that this sample does come from a normal, normally distributed population. So even though our sample size here, gosh, what was it, 16 or something, um, was less than 30, uh, we can say that our that uh, resting heart rates come from a normally distributed population. All right, so conditions are met. Uh, let's go through our steps. State the null and alternative hypothesis, hypotheses, that's plural. So the null hypothesis is that the mean of this class is the same as for all Americans, and the alternative is that it's different. Level of significance given to us again, uh, test statistic and p-value. So let's go to our data. That's the file I had up. So we'll go stat t stats, one sample with data. And we want to do resting heart rate. The null hypothesis is that the mean is 72. The alternative is that it is not equal. And so we compute, and we have a T statistic and a P value. So here we have, there was that screen, and then the P value. So T is not that big. T is kind of like a Z, so about one standard deviation. Um, and the P value is, is pretty large here. Just a uh, point of reference here for the T, if I look at the T, distribution and I said what do we have degrees of freedom here oh is it 20 21 in the sample so degrees of freedom would be 20 and if I find the probability of being greater than or equal to 0.908 you'll notice that this is not the p-value in fact the p-value is double that um is that right 0.908 oh 0 0.90 I kind of rounded there seven six seven yeah, so if you double that, the reason why is because the alternative hypothesis was that we didn't know if it was going to be greater than or less than. So we just said, that's why the p-value says it's that probability or more extreme. And so we actually find the probability in the tail. So even though it ended up on the right-hand side, we find the probability being on the left-hand side also. So we double, we double that probability. Not that you need to do that. It's fine to just use StatCrunch and use the p-value output there, but it's, it's important to understand that you might have a value that looks kind of extreme, but yet the p-value is you know, not that small because it's doubling it if you have a two-tailed hypothesis test. You can't, here's the thing, you can't go into this and say, well, 
our average was above it. So let's see, what is the probability that our average is higher than the national average? You have to go in before you collect the data and say, okay, let's ask our question, do we think our mean is different from? And so we, it, it's called a two-tailed hypothesis test. All right, so we reject if the p-value is less than the alpha of sig less than the level of significance, and ours is definitely not. It is not. We did not really observe that unusual of an event, so we state our conclusion. There's not enough evidence to support the claim that our average is different from the national average. Now, here's the thing about hypothesis testing. This doesn't mean that our average is 72. That's what we're saying, that this doesn't mean the null hypothesis is true. Our, our average is probably not exactly 72. All this means is we don't have enough evidence to say ours is different from that. That's the weakness of hypothesis testing. It, it can't prove that we, are, we have that same average. We probably don't. All we can say is do we have enough evidence to support the alternative or not, and in this case we do not. All right, one really important discussion. Um, so <laughs> I have kind of this made up example here. So suppose we have a new diet drug, ripoff, it's trademarked there, um, developed by Dr. I'm a quack. And he makes the claim that this drug is more effective than a placebo and a p-value for this study, uh, really small, 0 0.002. Um, and so a deeper study shows that the average weight loss was five pounds and that this very low p-value was due to a very, very large sample so here is the danger of this p-value like whoa that's a small p-value really powerful result but what's what's a five pound weight loss over three months is that drug and all the side effects of it is that really worth that very relatively small weight loss so the, the main point here is that statistical significance doesn't imply that there's any practical meaning there now, a lot of that statistical significance can, can be due to large sample sizes, if there's a large sample size. So I want you to be really critical in the future after this class. If you see some study that's been done and it claims to have this really small p-value, well, why is that? Was that just because they had a small or a really large sample? And what does that mean about their results? It's a really important thing to consider. So that's it uh, for the video from 10.3. And we have one more. Uh, hypothesis test to learn and then, then we'll kind of wrap it all up and compare and try to figure out which one to apply.